Hello guys, this is Caesar Creates and welcome back to my channel. In today's episode of our sandbox mode series in Jurassic World Evolution 2, we'll add three more dinosaurs to our park. And those three dinosaurs were, I think, one of the most requested dinosaurs that you wanted to see added to this park. I actually wanted to add them from the very beginning and I had uh, like this section planned for them from very early on. And those dinosaurs that I am talking about now are the Spinosaurus, Baryonyx and Suchomimus. So today we'll build a swamp for those guys, like a wetland section or something like that. Uh, that will house those three carnivores that love to eat fish, at least in this game. Under, I think, all of my episodes from this series, there were requests about the uh, Spinosaurus, about the swamp section, about the Suchomimus, and uh, some about the Baryonyx. So finally, I uh, today am building for those guys, and I hope you guys will be happy. I had like a very cool idea for them. I wanted to for sure build something like a swamp, uh, but I wanted to be like an experiment experience for the guests so they will be going through this swamp using like this narrow curved path that will be between two enclosures so uh, they will kind of get this like uh, experience of being in the middle or going through the middle of the swamp or the wetlands those dinosaurs are so iconic and also were so requested that I wanted to build something special for them. That's why I wanted to have or come up with some sort of a concept or an idea, a special idea for this part of the park. And this is how I came up with this idea of this swamp uh, adventure and I hope you guys will enjoy it. So today we'll have two separate enclosures. At first we are building uh, the one that will be slightly bigger and it will house uh, the Baryonyx and the Suchomimus because those two can actually live together in uh, this game and I decided to use that. We don't have too many uh, s like space left in this park so I want to utilize the space that I have to the maximum that's why I decided to house those guys together. This was also something uh, you guys uh, suggested to put those guys together in one uh, exhibit so that's what I did. In the second one we'll obviously have the uh, Spinosaurus, the two of them, and they will uh, have their own a slightly smaller enclosure but still they're fine with the space that I gave them. So my idea was also to lower uh, those enclosures a bit so they are like below the uh, path level so the guests will have this like really cool view inside of those enclosures when they are uh, like using this path between them and also I thought that you know creating those kind of ditches or something for the swamps really made sense because water is typically a bit lower when it comes to the terrain formations and stuff like that. So I really like how it is looking at the end. I also think that even though those enclosures are a bit different from all of the things that we did in this park, they still fit and they are really well nice fitted into this uh, part of the park. Uh, we also have a lot of water actually here because the river that we were uh, like creating throughout uh, several episodes where all the uh, herbivores live, they end up with like a lake or something. So we are building this swamp next to this lake. So I thought that it all makes sense sense to uh, do it in that exact location. I will of course add a lot of plants inside of those exhibits. Uh, I have this image in my head of the swamp being like very dense and lush with a lot of foliage, a lot of different trees because the water provides like the perfect conditions for uh, the plants to grow so that's why I decided to make those exhibits really like dense. Uh, I found out that this like ground fiber uh, that the plants that you can you know 
paint the terrain with. They look really cool, like a sort of like semi-aquatic plants, like you have the reeds and stuff like that. I think that it looks really cool and it totally like fits the swamp vibe that I was going for. I also added some rocks, but I didn't want to go too crazy with the rocks this time because I don't associate uh, the swamps with, you know, having a lot of uh, rock formations and stuff like that. So uh, I actually would, uh, will in the end, you know, delete some of the rocks that I placed because I felt like they are, they are too, too bit, too much of them. So in the tour that I'll give you guys at the end of this video, there will be uh, a bit less rocks that you could see me adding uh, here to this exhibit. So, as you guys can see, the Baryonyx and Sucomimus exhibit is now done and uh, right now I'm focusing on the Spinosaurus exhibit. It will be slightly slower, as I told you guys. I will make it a bit bigger by the end of this episode because I had this like space that I simply decided to add to this exhibit to make it a bit bigger. Uh, but yeah, this is the general shape. And this exhibit, as I told you guys, will house two Spinosauruses. Uh, I forgot to mention that in the first exhibit there will be three uh, Baryonyx, of course I used the Baryonyx Trio from Camp Cretaceous DLC and also three Sucomimuses, uh, one of those has this really nice yellow coloring that I really love and I will make sure to uh, showcase it in the tour portion of this video. Uh, when it comes to uh, the Spinosaurus, one of them is also one of my favorites when it comes to the skins. This is like this uh, blood red color. I'm not sure about the you know exact naming of those uh, colorations, but when I will check them out in the real time part of this video, I will let you know which uh, you know color combinations they actually are. Also, as you guys can see, I decided to have like a little square in between of those ha uh, exhibits. I decided that it will be just you know. Uh, something else added that will look interesting. Uh, I also wanted to have like a place for two of those viewing galleries, so uh, adding like a square with fountain and some decorations, I think it would really look really interesting. Uh, and yeah, in the end, I like how it has turned out. In this episode today, I will actually skip all the decorations that I normally add at the end of those videos because I'm sure if you been following this series you know uh, how exactly I do it what decorations I like and what which one which ones I add to like create sort of those fences for the guests to prevent them from you know uh, walking off the path of course the guests don't do it in this game but uh, I decided for a sake of realism that uh, you know, it wouldn't be too wise for the guests to wander off path in the uh, dino uh, park. You know how it may end if you've watched any of, literally any of the Jurassic World or Jurassic Park park movies. It never ends good, so yeah, I decided to, uh, you know, surround all of the paths with the decorations and the new, uh, like, concrete the fences that were added to the game and that I really really love to use uh, for the guests uh, I, although they are I think meant to be used in the backstage areas but we don't have any other options right now for fences for the guests and if we'll get any in the future which I would love to see Frontier if you are listening please add more <laughs> fences like this con concrete one because I think it's so like realistic to have like a barrier for the gas between them and an actual fence uh, like of the dino exhibit uh, just imagine if the guests are able to go and actually touch the fence because it is so close to the path uh, and there is like a T-Rex or something living in there that doesn't like uh, sound or look too realistic so it's good to have like this additional barrier between the guests and the uh, uh, and the actual fans. This is also something that zoos do when you have like, I don't know, some carnivores like tigers, like lions or even 
different, you know, dangerous animals. There is always like this uh, barrier between the actual fence of the exhibit uh, or a habitat and the guests and their paths so that, you know, the guests won't stick their fingers into the fence or their entire hands or even hats, <laughs> as I saw some stupid people do on some YouTube videos. So yeah, this is really cool to have like this barrier and I would love to have more of those. So, in the Spinosaurus exhibit, we'll also have a lot of water, of course, and uh, again, I used a lot of those uh, ground fiber plants uh, and a lot of uh, different trees for some uh, lush forests like surrounding the swamp, and I think in the end it looks so, so good. I really love those two habitats, and I hope you guys will love them as well. Also guys, I know that I've been absent with this series lately, uh, there's just been so much stuff happening in my life, I mean work and stuff like that, but from now on I think that I will be able to upload more regularly, because I simply cannot wait to finish this park and give you guys a final tour. Okay guys, I will meet you in a second in the real time part of this video. Hello again guys and welcome to the real time part of this video. Before we'll start this tour there's one thing that I forgot to mention in uh, the speed build part of the video and this is that I would love to thank you for 7000 subscribers here on the channel. So I think that yesterday we were able to reach this amazing goal and I am really really beyond uh, grateful for each and every one of you who have clicked the subscribe button down below and if you haven't done that already please consider to do so it really helps my channel out okay but without further talking uh, let's go let's see all of the things that we've built in today's episode so as you guys can see I am here at the beginning of this trail uh, through the swamp uh, exhibit there is one of the uh, viewing our galleries for the Spinosaurus, so we can actually go and check it out first. Maybe we'll have some really nice views and we have there's a Spinosaurus coming through. Uh, this swamp as you guys can see looking majestic and really really beautiful. Okay, so let me continue further because uh, I don't want to you guys to wait too long to see uh, this path because I love it so much. Adding all of those concrete barriers in here was a bit of a stretch. <laughs> yeah, I had to work a lot. That's why I didn't include all of those, uh, all of this footage in this video because this video will be very, very long. But, but as you guys can see here on the left, we have the two Spinosaurus. Spinosauruses. Uh, we can see one. One of them is probably hiding somewhere in the foliage. And here uh, on the right side, we have the Sugamimus, as you guys can see. Uh, here they are, two of them. Uh, and then Baryonyx also should be somewhere here. Here's our Baryonyx. They come to me today like I would be calling them. I don't know <laughs> what happened, but yeah, we can see all of those guys here. Uh, okay, and continuing further, uh, we have this like trail going through those swamps. So on the two sides, we have those carnivores. And I think that this idea was actually really, really cool. We are heading towards this uh, plaza that we will see in a minute. There is our Spino. Yeah, really close. Uh, I love this view right now. He decided just to stay here and look at us and we are looking at it. Thank God there is a fence. Okay, and on the other side, we cannot like see very well, but when I will go here, here is this like another plaza that we have right now in our park. Uh, and we can go and check out all of those viewing galleries. So let's see this one first. There is another Spinosaurus in here. And we uh, can have a look inside of this exhibit. Okay, and coming further, we will also go and visit the second uh, 
viewing gallery that we'll have a look, hopefully, yeah, uh, inside of this exhibit. I really, really love those two. I loved like creating those. I had this like clear vision and it really helps if you are like building in any of those games to have an idea of some sort of what you want to create. And it really, really helps uh, with, you know, being creative with having like this clear path that you follow while building. Okay, we'll go like around this exhibit. There is of course a car running over people like in all of my <laughs> videos. So we have it as well. We are going like along this exhibit for the Baryonics and the Sukomimus. Here we have some uh, uh, herbivores that we created last time. I mean, we didn't create the herbivores, we created the enclosure. Uh, here's, for example, the Iguanodon, Ornatosaurus, and Olotorian living in here. And we have another viewing opportunity in here into the Sukomimus. This is my favorite, by the way. And the Baryonyx, uh, which is in there. Yeah, re looking really, really cool. Here's a Baryonyx, like on the left, looking at us, a bit creepy. <laughs> okay, and coming back this way, uh, we will go and uh, we can enter actually the plaza that we've built like two episodes ago. Uh, so uh, just to show you guys where we are positioned. Okay, and let's show you guys uh, this all that I've built today from the above so we have like the better view of the things. So this is the main plaza that we've built some time ago and here are two new enclosures. So here's the first one. I love like this view, this vista point here. Uh, I love those plants actually, as I told you guys, and I think like this enclosure is looking just beautiful. Uh, as well as this one and they create this really really cool area new area in our park I am really really happy with how it has turned out like just look at it like this game is so beautiful like the graphics in this game are just stunning and the fact that you are able to create such things like so quickly actually is just like it makes me so happy. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this and those enclosures because I am so, so, so happy with how they has turned out. And yeah, we have uh, this large uh, herbivore enclosure in here. And we, right now we'll focus obviously on this side of the park. We'll add some enclosures in here. We'll do some stuff in here and we still have some uh, s uh, some s uh, s place in here, but looking at the map, uh, as you guys can see, most of the map is filled right now, so uh, only like uh, this space is left here, and we have quite a lot of space actually here, but here's like this mountain, so we cannot build too much in here. Uh, but yeah, I will make sure to, you know, utilize the space in here as much as we'll be able to add a lot of dinosaurs still. Okay, but before we we'll end, let's have a look uh, at the dinosaurs that we added today. So this is the Baryonyx. I'm sorry, I am not the best when it comes to, you know, uh, when it comes to recognizing them. This is Grim. Uh, I think that I saw another one in here. Yes, this will be uh, the chaos. Looking really, really cute. And then we have the limbo. The limbo being my favorite, I think. I really like the colors of this guy. Okay, so this is the Baryonyx. And when it comes to Sukomimus, uh, let me find those. This enclosure is quite big, uh, to be honest. Where are you guys? Hello. Oh, here you are. And this is actually my favorite, like, I think, coloration of the Tsukomimus in the game. Like, it's so, like, plain, but it looks so cool with this yellow, like, pattern. Yeah, I love this guy. And also... It has like this really cool jaws and stuff. 
so this is if you are uh, like wondering what color it does this this is this this Julian Mountains Papurana. Okay, we also have uh, like this guy, this green one. This is the mangrove forest Papurana. Also looking cool. This is basically the same pattern, but the dinosaur is green. And then we also have uh, this guy, which is more plain, but still looking really, really cool. I love their hats. Okay, and coming uh, like further to the the Spinosaurus, they are actually in here together. So we have this like uh, Death Valley Limbo Bates, I think, uh, with these like uh, purple markings in here looking really cool. But this one is my favorite of all of the skins, I think. It is looking so, so good with this yellow eye and uh you know this red like blood red coloration here and on the spine and yeah this is so so beautiful like look at this guy also i really like love this their habitats this is water section is quite big in here and this is what i wanted to achieve and there are some smaller ones in here and a bit bit of the denser area in here where they can potentially hide sleep or do something uh, like that so yeah those are the two enclosures i hope you guys enjoyed today's video uh, i hope you like how they have turned out really this was so so uh, like requested that i wanted to finally have the swamp section in my park and i hope you guys won't be disappointed Okay, guys, so this is basically all that we have in this episode. I hope you have enjoyed it, as I told you. Uh, if you did, please consider to subscribe to my channel. This would really mean a world to me and will uh, help my little channel to grow. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up down below. Ring the bell if you want to be notified every time I upload a new video. Uh, and also comment down below if you like those two enclosures and if you still have any of the recommendations for uh, the dinosaurs that we still should add to this park. I would love to hear them. We still have some space as I showed you guys in uh, this episode. Okay, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.